Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at some of the consequences of the factor theorem. Now, as we learned before, the factor theorem was if we find a zero of a polynomial, then x minus that zero is a factor of that polynomial. Okay, so some of the consequences, so basically some of the, the things that come up when we use this is, um, well, there's about six or seven different little theorems, okay? And so we're going to break that up over three videos. Um, in this little sub-series, I guess. So what we'll do is we'll start off with the several distinct zeros. So suppose that several distinct zeros of a polynomial have been found. So that is that we've got two dot 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 and then some amount of roots. Okay, so all of these are distinct zeros of the polynomial. Then, okay, then x minus alpha 1, lots of x minus alpha 2, lots of x minus all the way up to the uh, 0 that we have, um, is a factor, is a factor of some polynomial, okay, whatever our polynomial is. So r roots, oh, that should be zeros, not roots. So r zeros of p of x. Okay, so basically, if you can come up and find a few zeros, okay, then those zeros, when you multiply them out, will create a factor of p of x, okay? And that's going to help us with some of our um, factorizing of these things because it'll make, it'll make it a bit easier. So that's sort of rule number one. So let's call it A. And then we've got rule number two, okay? which is if it's pretty much the same thing, but they're all um, distinct zeros. So let's suppose we have a1 or alpha2 all the way up to the n for a polynomial of n degree. So that is, it's got, you know, say if it was power of five, then these are five uh, zeros of that. Okay, so if we've got that one, then we can rewrite p of x as a lots of x minus alpha 1, x minus alpha 2, all the way up to our final zero, like that, where a is a leading um, coefficient. So basically this, what this is saying is that we can rewrite our whole polynomial as linear factors in this case, okay? And we'll be looking at that in a little bit more detail in an example coming up shortly. But the idea behind this is it's going to allow us to factorize um, different uh, polynomials and give us results that, you know, that normally we wouldn't be able to find. So the way we're going to do it is we're going to use trial and error to find as many integer zeros of P of X as possible. And then once we've done that, we're going to use long division and divide P of X by the product of the known factors. So once we've found the factors, uh, so once we've found the zeros, okay, we're going to use that and turn them into a factor. And then once we've found that factor, we're going to use long division to divide. So let's have a look at an example. Oh, okay. So we've got this one here, which says factor P of X is equal to 2X to the power of 4 plus 2X cubed minus 18X squared plus 22X minus 8 completely. Okay, so bef as before, all the coefficients are integers, so any integer zero is a divisor of the constant term. Okay, so what we're going to do first is I'm going to actually factorize this a little bit to begin with. So this is p of x is equal to, it's not as thick as I want, that's better. So p of x is equal to, well let's take a factor of 2 out first x4 plus 2x, oh, that should be just x cubed, not 2x cubed. So x cubed, oh god, disaster. Minus 9x squared plus 11x minus 8, okay? So basically what this polynomial is going to turn into is, um, you know, two lots of x minus something, blah, 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 okay? So let's try and find some uh, integer values that when we put into this um, polynomial, we get an, a value of zero, okay? So 
um, all the coefficients are integers, as we said. So any integer zero is a divisor of the constant term. So the minus, that should be minus four, not minus eight. Okay, so basically all, all of the factors of minus four uh, are the possible uh, divisors in this case, okay? So we've got one and minus four, two and minus two and four and minus one. So these can be the only uh, integer values that will give us the zeros for this polynomial. So let's try some values, okay? Let's try p of one. So that's two lots of one to the power of four plus one cubed minus nine lots of one squared plus 11 lots of one minus four, okay? So what we'll do is we'll put that in a calculator. So one to the power of four plus one cubed minus nine lots of one squared plus 11 lots of one minus four, okay? And that gives us a value of zero. So therefore, this means that, um, that means that x minus one is a factor of this equation above, okay? Um, let's try another number. So we've done one, let's try x is equal to, I don't know, let's pick another one at random, two, and try two. So we get two lots of two to the power of four plus two cubed minus nine lots of two squared plus 11 lots of two minus four, okay? So again, we can put that into this equation up here onto this polynomial up here, sorry, on my calculator. So we've got two to the power of four plus two cubed minus nine lots of two squared plus 11 lots of two minus four. And that one is equal to 12. I should write here, this is equal to zero. And so therefore X minus two is not, which is not equal to zero, is not a factor of P of X. So can you see where I'm getting this? Like basically if if our polynomial, when we substitute a value in is equal to one, we get a factor or it's going, that number is going to give us a factor. But if it doesn't, then it's not going to be a factor. So basically if I divided this polynomial up here by X minus one, we would get something with no remainder. Whereas if I did it with the X minus two, then we would get a remainder. Um, let's try another, just a random value. Let's try P minus four. So P minus four. Okay, so we're gonna substitute that in. So the two lots of minus four to the power of four plus minus four cubed minus nine lots of minus four squared plus 11 lots of minus four minus four. Okay, so going back up here, minus four to the power of four. Remember to when you're putting this into your calculator to make sure you put brackets around it. Otherwise, when you do your squaring and your um, cubing and stuff, it won't take the negative into consideration. Okay, and we get that that is equal to zero as well. So therefore, x plus four in this case is a factor of p of x, just like that. So um, let's not do any more. I'm sure there are going to be other ones, but what we're going to do is we're going to use these two factors we found and we're going to divide our original polynomial um, by the factors that we found. So let's start off by going, okay, well, x plus four and x minus one are some factors of this. So if I expand this out, this is going to give us x squared plus four x minus x minus four, which is x squared plus three x minus four. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this polynomial, uh, this factor here, and I'm going to divide it by my main one back up the top, okay? Now I'm going to ignore the two because basically my solution when I divide this polynomial, uh, this you know factor down here by this polynomial back up the top, um, if I leave the twos in there, it's just going to be basically multiplied by two. So let's divide this one out. So I'm gonna put x squared, plus three X minus four, okay? And underneath we're gonna put X to the power of four plus X cubed 
minus 9x squared plus 11x minus 4. Okay. So doing our long division, so x to the power of 4 divided by x to the power of 4 is x squared, which is x to the power of 4 plus 3x cubed minus 4x squared. And we're going to subtract these. So that's 0. Um, that's minus 2x cubed. And that is minus 9x, uh, not 9, minus 5x squared. And the other ones are going to come down, plus 11x and minus 4. Okay, just like that. Now the x squared, okay, so the next bit we've got x squared divided, uh, negative 2x cubed divided by x squared, so it's minus 2x. So it's going to give us minus 2x cubed. It's going to give us minus 6x squared. Okay, and then it's going to also give us plus 8x, I think. Think. Yep, plus 8x. Okay, and we're going to subtract these two again like we did before. So it gives us 0. This gives us x squared. Okay, 8x to minus 3. No, 11x minus 8x is 3x, and minus 4 take away nothing is just minus 4. And have a look at that. We've got what we've got left over. So x squared plus 3x divide, minus 4 divided by x squared plus 3x minus 4. Well, that's just equal to uh, 1 as we know, but we can do it the long way, just to show that we can do it. So x squared divided by x squared is 1, 1 times x squared is x squared, 1 times 3x is 3x, 1 times minus 4 is minus 4, okay, so there it is there. We're going to subtract, so that's 0, that's 0, and that's 0, no remainder. Okay, so that means that my polynomial, p of x, which started off as two lots of, um, x to the power of 4 plus x cubed minus 9x squared plus 11x minus 4 is the same as our dividend, so x squared minus 2x plus 1 times our divider, x squared plus 3x minus 4 plus our remainder, which in this case is 0. Now, factorizing this, because I've got two quadratics, we know how to factorize quadratics, and we know that this side is already equal to um, x minus 4, no, sorry, x plus 4, and x minus 1, because those are those two factors from above. And on this side, we've got x squared minus 2x plus 1, so that's going to be, so two numbers that add to 1, uh, sorry, to add to minus 2, but multiply to 1, what's going to be minus 1 and minus 1 like that. So putting this all together, we can see that we've got three lots of x minus one, and we've got one x plus four, like that. So therefore, factorizing p of x is equal to, oh sorry, there should be some twos out the front of this as well. So factorizing two lots, or oh, I'll write it this way, two x to the power four, plus two x cubed, minus 18 x squared, plus 22 x minus eight, that's equal to two lots of x minus one cubed, lots of x plus four, like that, okay? So quite a bit of working out, but it takes out all of those steps that you would necessarily need to do to do your long division, okay? So because I essentially said to myself, well, I've got a power of four, so if I can reduce it to a quadratic, we know how to factorize quadratics, and that's pretty easy to do. So finding two of the factors would really help us with that, okay? So if we tried to put any other numbers except for one and minus four into the original polynomial, we would have ended up with something that wasn't zero. So once you've you know worked out a few of your factors, you can just put them straight in and divide it and it should throw out your answer that you need. So we'll have another go at this one. Um, so we'll have another go at another one. So we've got this one here, which is, um, we've got x to the power four minus x cubed minus seven x squared plus x plus six. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to realize that the possible zeros for this are going to be factors of the constant term. So the factors of six. So factors of six are one and six, two and three, and negative one, negative six, and negative two and negative three. Okay, so you need to make sure you have all your possible combinations. So what we're going to start doing is we're going to start substituting some values in. So we'll start with p of 1. So it's 1 to the power of 4 minus 1 cubed 
minus seven lots of one squared plus one plus six. Okay, so we'll put that into the calculator. One to the power of four minus one oh, minus one cubed minus seven lots of one squared plus one plus six and look at that you get zero so therefore x minus one is a factor of p of x so again you could try it for all of these values here but just to let you know i have done it ahead and the other factors okay so the other factors are x plus one x plus 2 and x minus 3. Okay, so those are all the factors. So I've got x minus 1, x plus 1, x plus 2 and x minus 3. Okay, so let's have a look and see how this falls out then. So we basically have a 4 degree polynomial and we have these three factors plus this one up here which is four uh, zeros or four factors. So because that is the same as the degree of the polynomial, those should be the only distinct zeros of that degree four polynomial, okay? So we can write that hence P of X, which is equal to X to the power of four minus X cubed minus seven X squared plus X plus six is equal to x minus 1, x plus 1, x plus 2, x minus 3, okay? So four parts. Degree 4. Okay? And so that's basically an example of the other one. So that's going to be it for the video number one. What we'll do in the next one is we'll have a look at the another few um, sort of like theorem -y type things and we'll have a look at a single example for those ones. So I'll see you guys in the next video.